Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for stopping by to visit and enjoy some crafting with me. In our first project, I'm going to use a cookie jar from Dollar Tree. I paid $1.25 for this. I'm also using some pretty scrapbook paper as well as some Mod Podge. I'm showing you this small bottle I bought from Dollar Tree, but Michael's has this large jar I got for 40% off. Now, it's easy to remove the little knob off the lid of the cookie jar. So once you do that, place it on your scrapbook paper and trace around that circular pattern. Once you have your outline drawn, simply cut it out. Then you'll want to set it aside and you'll want to remove any stickers that are on the cookie jar. They were actually surprisingly easy to get off. And I was happy they didn't leave any residue. So now your cookie jar is all ready to adorn. This project is so much fun and so easy to get a beautiful result. I'm going to take the cutout round and I'm gonna place it on top of the lid. There'll be a slight plastic protrusion where that knob had attached. That's your center point. And you're, you can see, I'm just going to touch it with the pen. And then I'm going to use the pointed end of my scissors to simply make a hole. That will allow it to fit right back onto the lid. And it's a very clean look. Next, I'm removing it so that I can use some painter's tape around the rim of that lid that will protect it from the Mod Podge that we're getting ready to apply. Using a brush as well as the Mod Podge from Dollar Tree, I'm just spreading a nice liberal coat evenly over the surface of the lid. The paper is rather thick, so it can handle a fairly good amount of Mod Podge uh, as an underlay, and that will allow the paper to adhere very well. Now that it's coated evenly, I'm reattaching that cutout sheet to the top, and then I'm adding a nice thick layer of Mod Podge over the surface. That will seal it and provide a very nice, clear, finished appearance. As that dries, the next step is to reattach your plastic knob. It's rather nondescript, so I decided to add something to embellish it. But first, I'm removing the painter's tape to reveal a nice, clean border. Now, I'm using a drop of E6000 glue. Hot glue would work fine, too. And what I'm going to do is attach a flat wooden knob that I had purchased in a package from Amazon. They came in the Christmas red and green colors, and I chose this pretty festive red to act as the exclamation point and to serve as a nice knob for lifting the lid. It really does finish it off. Now, no candy jar is complete without the candy. So I happen to receive as a gift some foil wrap chocolates and they had nice bright colors. So I thought I would go ahead and show you just how decorative it appears. Another option of course would be to fill it with candy canes or you could use it as a cookie jar. A child's gift could also be contained if you decorated the lid in a, a more children's festive pattern. You could fill it with little matchbox cars, for example. But I think it looks very festive with these Santa Claus foil wrapped faces. Our next project is also festive and fun and very easy. This was a dollar at the Dollar General and it's designed to be a chair cover. I opened the package and opened it out and saw that it was large enough to be filled as a decorative Christmas pillow. So I, after I opened it up, I got some pillow filling and I just filled it up part way. The reason I say part way is because you want to still allow it to be able to fold over itself the way the Santa's hat looks in the picture. So I just put the stuffing in the lower two thirds to still allow it to be able to fold over envelope style. Once it was filled and folded over, I used a drop of hot glue on the back of the pom-pom. I'm showing you again how it appears on the package uh, picture. 
Now that it has been stuffed and folded down and attached, we're going to go ahead and seal the bottom up. Because it's all already plumped and full, we can use a line of hot glue along that white border and just seal it up. You can see this is about a five minute project and it makes a sweet little pillow to add a Christmas accent anywhere you'd like to place it. You can see here how I've styled it against my sofa with another small pillow in front. As you see, this can be made for a dollar plus some pillow filling. As you see, it also looks cute in a bedroom styled against the back of a bed. And now I think I've saved the best for last. I'm using one of the Dollar Tree calendars and going to the December page where I see the snow covered trees. I'm also using one of the Dollar Tree cut out wood Christmas trees. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the string and the tags and lay the page down so that the portion of the image you want to see against your tree is in place. As you look at the image, just consider what portion you want showing against the front of your design. First, I'll cut the image broadly so that we can lay it down onto the wooden form. Using a sponge brush from Dollar Tree, I'm applying the Mod Podge liberally across the front surface. The calendar paper is nice and thick, so it can handle a fairly good amount of Mod Podge underneath. After the Mod Podge is evenly applied, I'm laying down the pattern over top of that surface. Then I'm adding another coating of the Mod Podge over the top. It will dry clear and provide a nice finished appearance. But before it dries, I'm going to add one more embellishment. I'm using some of this glitter that I purchased at the Walmart in a large jar, and I'm just having fun sprinkling it all over the surface to give the look of a snowy forest. That adds another dimension of visual interest to the image. Once it's dry entirely, I'm taking my sanding block and just going around all the borders to sand off that excess paper. If you wait until it's dry, it's important because if it's wet, the paper will tear, but it's very durable once dry and you'll see that it just falls off and leaves a very smooth finished edge and now you can see just how gorgeous it is as it's dried. The light shimmers off of that surface. And to add another sparkle, I'm using a jewel from Totally Dazzled. You could use a piece of costume jewelry or anything else you would like to add to embellish the top. That also serves to cover in that hole where the cord was. Using a drop of hot glue, I'm just attaching it to the top of the tree. There are a lot of ways you could use this ornament, but I decided to use a frame that I had purchased on sale on a clearance from Hobby Lobby. I paid $4.99 for this very sturdy frame. Now, obviously the picture and the writing on the front is not what I want for this project, but I'm going to show you how I'm modifying it to make it a beautiful backdrop for our tree. I'm taking out this back panel and using this DIY paint in the color linen. I'm using a sponge brush from Dollar Tree and just coating the entire surface with that nice thick paint. It provides good coverage, but I'm still deciding to go ahead and add a second coat. That way we'll have complete opaque coverage. Then, while the paint is still wet, I'm going to use more of that Walmart glitter and I'm going to glitter around the entire border of this. Now, I say the border because that's the only part that's going to be visible once we get all of this reassembled back into the frame. But you can see that while the paint is wet, the glittered snowy look really does embellish it. It dried beautifully, and now I'm going to reinsert it into the frame. I cleaned the glass, but the writing doesn't come off. So we're going to cover it up using a piece of scrapbook paper. The rich green matte 
gives a beautiful depth of color and draws out that pine in the tree image. Now I'm using some of this snow text to uh, apply with a plastic knife just to add some snow to the base of the tree. This product is thick and fluffy and I'm able to mound it and make it look like wind-blown snow. Please notice that although I put the linen painted sheet inside behind the glass, I am attaching the scrapbook paper with the tree to the exterior of the glass and it gives it beautiful dimensionality. Also, it was a happy accident to realize that a little bit of the writing was still extending, prompting me to come up with a way to cover it up. And I found these little owl buttons that I had purchased at Hobby Lobby, and I was able to hot glue them on, as well as another embellishment from Totally Dazzled. It's a fun way to let creativity just kind of stream forth because oftentimes when you start a project, it tends to evolve in its own unique, lovely ways. It looks so beautiful coming in from the front door and catching the light as that snowy surface shimmers. You can see too that that border with the glitter really shines very brightly. And I added, to cover up the hook from which it's hanging, I added another jewel from Totally Dazzled, and that just kind of carries forth the theme as well. I hope you enjoy these projects as much as I've enjoyed showing them to you. It's so much fun to be creative for gifting, for decorating your home. It's a real blessing. Thank you for joining me. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I would love to hear your comments below. Take care, and God bless.